So we got questions here. First one, how come you're so handsome? Um, thank you very much, but I, I don't think I'm, I don't think I am. I'm actually very average looking, and I'm actually on diet because I think I need to lose weight. All right, so this is a big question that many uh, many people have. They think that programming is something that they need to do like when they're young, and I don't I don't think so. I mean, I think that when you're young, well, you know less and you you learn faster. But I think you can start coding at any time in life. I really I really believe that. Um, I think maybe you will have a hard time if you start to code when you're 30 or maybe 40 or whatever, if you have like a lot of responsibilities, I guess, because if you have a lot of responsibilities, then you need to have like a day job, take time from you. So maybe you will, you will learn slower. I think everybody should start from HTML and CSS. I think that when you start HTML, CSS, um, it's very visual, you know, like what you do is very visual, so you get kind of excited. If you, if you learn how to code with something like, I don't know, Python or C or whatever, and you don't make visual stuff, you kind of get bored because you never see like results, you know? So you, like, you never see like anything. You never see what your, your progress. If you make an HTML website, they're gonna be like, oh shit, it's a website. I know what that is. Congratulations, you make websites now. And everybody's gonna be like, yay, awesome. When I was young, I always had a goal of how to make something. So for example, I wanted to make a virus because I wanted to hack my mom's computer. So I always had that goal in mind. I never wanted to become a programmer. I just wanted to use programming to do something for me. Looking Google, exactly, how can I make a virus in Python so I can get the password of an email? And then from there, I learn a little bit more and a little bit more, and then it becomes like, okay, I'm learning to program, but I never approach programming as something like, I wanna become a programmer. I never did that at all. But what, what was the most important thing for me was going to a website, let's say Airbnb. So I was going to this website to Airbnb, for example, and I was like, oh my God, I want to learn how they put this, for example, I don't know, this square on top of the image. So I used to spend so much time just looking at the code, inspecting the elements and being like, how did they do it? How did they change this? What position is it? I spent so much time just looking. That's usually what I did for very, very fucking long time. And then I was copying that to my website. So that's, I, that's why I think I believe in code cloning because it really, I learned by cloning. But it's usually like that, guys. I never learned or tried to learn because I wanted to, how can I say that, to become a programmer. I usually learned for a goal. I had a goal in mind and it was to do something. That's why when I teach, I don't just teach you the theory, I teach the actual thing, like how to make a React app, not how to learn React or how to say that you program in React. We make something and there is a lot of power in that. Do you read documents? Is that how you stuff, read new stuff? Yes, sometimes when you're learning something, it is very, very important to read the documentation. I mean, sometimes the documentation is shit and you're like, oh my God, it's disgusting. So for example, the recent project I was looking at was Graphene in Django. And I don't wanna hate on anybody and I think that the, what they do is amazing and whatever, but the documentation sucks when you're building something and it's like, oh God, it's not good, right? So that part, for example, in that part, the documentation in that, for example, in this library, it was so hard to learn because there was no examples. Good example of documentation is the React JS website. It's amazing, it's fucking beautiful and yeah. Like just reading the documentation and again, read the documentation, not to understand, like to, to learn the theory, read it if there is an example there, all right? That's what I did. Documentation, always as the first guide before you buy any book, any course, documentation first. All right, I don't have much time. I need to spend time efficiently. How should I study? All right, so this is very important because I wasted a lot of time when I was learning how to program I wasted so much time learning shit that didn't work or that nobody used or that it was useless. So it's very important that you get a mentor, either me or some of your friends that program already, and they will tell you what you shouldn't learn. For example, now it's 2019. You shouldn't fucking learn jQuery, all right? For example, this kind of advice will save you so much time. I didn't have this, never. So I used to learn everything that was there. If I see a title, learn this. I will just go and learn it. And then after a week, I realize, hey, this is fucking stupid. I shouldn't have learned it. So these kind of things, 
get a mentor and that they will tell you how to study. If you don't have a mentor, we have a, we have a video about a roadmap of how to study, or you can go to the roadmap, Nomad Academy, slash P, slash roadmap, where we show you the path that I recommend to you how to get. Which language to study to become full stack? JavaScript, done, end of the question. After taking Nomad Code's course, how should I do review? I just copy paste your code and don't remember anything much. Many people say that they finish the course and then they just copy paste what I'm doing and that it's done. Like they don't understand anything. I think that what you should do after you finish a course is to really fucking go and practice. Then please fucking move to something that is useful. I love you too. Then move to something that is useful and do a project for yourself, all right? With of course, right? I want you to send me a link with your WeTube clone plus some features. And if you take a course with me, you know that some of those features I tell you. I say, for example, we don't have a change password, add the change password. I say, for example, this is not responsive, make it responsive. These kind of things will teach you a lot, which is taking from a project that you build with me and then boom, you add some more stuff to it, all right? Japan guy, Mr. Kim, I am a front engineer, do you think I need to study backend? Uh, if you are happy and if it makes you happy to do backend, then go ahead. Don't do anything that makes you unhappy. If you're happy being a frontend and you don't give a shit about backend and you don't like databases and you think it's a boring, don't study it. If you want to learn because it makes you happy and whatever, then I think you should, you should go and learn it. Um, I, as you know, I cannot tell you, go study database, because that sounds like bullshit, like go study database is nothing. I will just say, go do a project that relies heavily on data. That will teach you a lot about databases, right? Instead of saying, go study database, go make a project that uses data like a motherfucker. Some, a lot of relationships, maybe you can build a hotel booking system, an airplane ticket simulator that requires a lot of data in many places together. That will teach you a lot of databases, all right? So yeah, all right, uh, I'm back in engineer. Do you think I need to study frontend? Should I study JS and focus on JS only? Okay, so here we disagree. I don't think that everybody is looking for a work for a frontend developer. Actually, I think that frontend developers are gonna get replaced if they don't become specialist or full stack or serverless or something like that. Um, I really think that front-end developers are gonna get replaced by machines because front-end developer is just basically design and shit like that. And anybody could do that. Machines do it. There is even w websites for that, applications for that. I would say focus on JS because JS opens up your possibilities to be a front-end, to be a back-end, to maybe do some mobile apps. I think it just opens up your possibilities. And for example, if, you, if you're a backend and you know JS, then you can talk to developers in the front end or you can do everything by yourself. So maybe you can go to a full stack position, which makes more sense. And if, you are a, if you're already a backend, I think backend is harder than front end. So if you're already a backend, front end is gonna be super easy for you if you focus on JS, I guess. And if, you, if your backend is JS, if your backend is something like Java, then I think it's gonna be a little bit hard. Is there other way to get a remote job other than Fiverr and Upwork? Yes, of course. And what do you think of Spring, PHP, and the future of web development? Is there any chance that you use this core channel instead of Slack? I want to start study open source, but I don't know what's my project. How many mistakes have you done? Oh my God, too late. We're gonna upload it, so don't worry about it. Jesus Christ.